I think we've now had three generations of the uh, royal family speaking out on this issue. Uh, Prince William, Prince Charles, and now the Queen. And of course, the Queen speaking out is quite unprecedented. I think, look, where we are in relation to the climate summit in Glasgow, we have, we're not anywhere close uh, to the finishing line in terms of the pledges that countries have made around the world. Uh, in terms of meeting the target set by scientists of halving uh, emissions by 2030. So I think everybody's speaking out, and, and particularly somebody like the Queen that carries some weight around the world, this is tremendously important. And I think if you if you match that also with young people who are speaking out, I mean, not just you know famous young people like Greta, incredibly important, but I'm actually uh, at, at a, a school uh, climate assembly, one and a half thousand school children uh, here with me talking about climate action, raising their voice. I mean, we need everybody's voice to be raised, but particularly those of young people. But the fact that the queen is adding her voice from her generation, I think is absolutely brilliant news. And it is, of course, highly unusual to, to get an insight into what the Queen is really thinking. She said it's really irritating when they talk, but they don't do. Who's she talking about? Well, partly I think she's talking about everybody because, you know, the Rio Earth Summit, when, you know, all the world leaders pledged to take action on climate change, on the nature crisis and eradicate global poverty actually happened 30 years ago at the Rio Earth Summit. So basically all the world leaders are culpable in terms of what they've done in the past 30 years. But of course, there is a big elephant in the room. There's no question about that. I mean, China is responsible for more than a quarter of the world's emissions. We can't make this target work unless China increases its ambitions. So I think there are a couple of countries of which China is probably the leader who really do need to step up to the plate and increase the level of ambition that is currently on the table. And, and as it stands, China hasn't submitted its targets and it's also expected that President Xi won't attend the COP26 summit. Without that, without China on board, what hopes are there of any real progress? Look, obviously it's, you know, it's disappointing that some world leaders uh, are not coming uh, to Glasgow and particularly uh, President Xi from China uh, because they really do need to be in the room. They are very, very big players. But I think also what needs to happen at the Glasgow summit is that those countries that are in the room, and particularly the UK is going to be there, President Biden from the United States is going to be there. We need to prove that a just transition can work, that if we invest money in renewable energy, if we invest money in energy efficiency, you know, if we, for example, can protect the world's rainforest by having a more plant-based diet and tackling the industrial meat industry, if we can prove that these things can work and deliver real change, positive change, that really benefits people, then I think we can be an example to the rest of the world to step up their ambition and start meeting the targets that scientists have set us and are really clear about. You know, as Prince Charles said, we're in the last chance saloon here. We're running out of time. We've got to act now. And of course, Prince Charles has been talking about this for a very long time. Well, yes, and I, and I think that, you know, <laughs> I, you know, Prince Charles, of course, you know, was was deemed to be quite eccentric in terms of some of the views he had about nature and, and climate change over many decades. And of course, now what he's saying is pretty mainstream and more or less accepted by every world leader, every country and nearly every human being on the planet. So, you know, that's the good news in, in the fact that things have shifted. Uh, but now it's it's time for words is over. I mean, Greta said, you know, too much blah, blah, blah. And I, I agree with her. You know, action now is really what counts. So no RSVP from China, but, but some progress. The Australian PM, Scott Morrison, has now said he is attending. But, but can we expect any real commitments from Australia? Well, you know, Scott Morrison has basically been shamed into a, a, attending, and it is really important that he does attend. I mean, Australia is the second largest coal exporter in the world after Indonesia. It's really critical that Australia gets off coal and invests heavily in renewable energy. I can't think of any country in the world that's got more renewable energy resources than Australia. And I think that we really need to turn the heat up on Scott Morrison, the Australian Prime Minister. He needs to come under real pressure from other world leaders, and particularly leaders from developing countries whose you know, countries will be first at risk, and some of them you know, in the Pacific and the Indian Ocean will disappear if rich countries like Australia don't step up to the plate.